Hi, this is B from Sorcery Soap, and today I wanted to talk to you about some soap ideas I had and show you a couple other things. Okay, um, here's my thought. Well, first of all, I'm going to show you, I'm going to do the donkeys. The donkeys, mm, yeah, they'll fit. Okay, so the donkey stencils. So a couple things I wanted to talk to you about is part of the reason why I made the stencils. Well, not everybody wants to take the time to do the um, to do the hand molded things that I make. <laughs> I'll put a picture in here, but and I understand that because it takes a lot of time to do those things. And so I started thinking, you know, what could we do, or what could I, what could I do to um, maybe make soaps, you know, unique, original, and still be able to produce some things and it just seemed logical to me to do the stencils because there's so many you know ideas and I'm capable of making the stencils and so to use my skill in order to do that and and be able to you know support other soap makers making things so um, my thought is well I'm gonna try and talk and do this at the same time I don't know how that's gonna work but we'll see anyway so this isn't, oh, where's my, hang on, I need to get a, let me show you. So here's this, this is two, almost two and a half. Okay, yeah, I suck at measurements, but anyway, so almost two and a half by three inch wide, so you know what size bar this is, and this is what these will work on. So anything from this size on bigger will work, which is about an average size bar. But you know, one of the reasons why I made made it this size, and hopefully you can see it okay. Let me see where we are. Yeah, you can see it okay. Is because you can't make it too much smaller. Like this is I'm pushing the limit with my stencil maker and with the stencil itself in order to come out. Because if you make it too much smaller, the details aren't gonna come out. So here's my thought. Okay. And I know I've covered this before, but I, it's, it all bears repeating for sure. So I put soap dough in an extruder simply because it gives me just enough soap dough and I don't have to wrap and unwrap it. So I haven't done anything to the top of this bar. It's a fully cured bar. I think these are two months old. So, um, and it's beveled and planed. So it's pretty smooth. So anything that's like even rougher than this will help. So then, you know, you just hold it down and you try to move with the shape of the stencil so you don't go across too much. So, Because uh, if you go across things, it'll shove it underneath of it. Anyway, so here's my thought. Is that I, I like, I follow this, um, that's a little hard chunk right there. I follow this donkey sanctuary and I like what they post and I like what they're about and so I started thinking like it just sort of jumped in my mind I was like well I could send them some soap you know to support them and then I started kind of thinking about that that whole idea is like would they think I'm a cheese ball for sending them soap it's free I'm not gonna you know I'm just saying like I support you and whatever and not a marketing thing or anything just to send them a bar of soap with some donkey faces on it, right? And do this to a bunch of places that I like and that I think are doing good works in the world. Because, I mean, granted it costs a bit of money to do those things, but, you know, it's a good effort. And so one of the reasons I was thinking about this is because, one of the reasons I was thinking about this is because, you know, I've supported uh, charities in the past and, and I was too disheartened with that, knowing that my money wasn't going where it should go. And I saw, um, there was a bunch of us that did this in the area I used to live in, which is pretty rural too. And I saw the humane, ah, I saw a society um, go through and claim parvo repeatedly when uh, too many times to be true and if that's the case if they continue to get parvo like that then then they got to change their 
sanitation process or something, right? I mean, it just seemed ludicrous that they would just repeatedly have parvo and have to euthanize to a non-kill shelter to euthanize the whole shelter. And I was like, there's something wrong with this. And so uh, a bunch of us got together and agreed on that. And we said we could do better. And instead of, because I'd been sending them money every year as a donation and a ridiculous write-off. That's a whole nother story. But anyway, um, as a donation and... Then I decided, okay, would my money be better spent sent there or would it be better spent with like grassroots efforts, you know? And so that's what I decided is I'll just take in puppies and dogs or whatever. I had plenty of room and um, do it myself, right? Hey, look at that. That's pretty awesome. All the little details came out. Awesome. Okay. So let me get another bar. Anyway, so after doing that for a bunch of years and being known as like the rescue lady, <laughs> people would call me at the most random times. Like, you know, I had a lot of dogs and it took me a long time to get my carpets cleaned to save up the money to get them professionally cleaned and all that. And I mean, I know a lot of tricks in order to keep carpets clean and whatnot, you know, to draw out the mess and whatnot. Anyway, not to get into all that, but... I'm just having a talk with you. So I, so the, one day I was having my carpets professionally cleaned. Somebody was at an emergency with a dog, and I just couldn't bear it. You know, it was like a little Maltese running around. Nobody was picking it up, and they, you know, they just didn't want bad things to happen to it. So I went and picked it up and found it at home, and it was awesome because I knew the person who took the, you know, who I vetted it all. I mean, it was just so much work, right? I mean, definitely worth it, but it was a lot of work. And, and so I decided that that's probably not the best route for me and my efforts to go, even though I did a lot and changed a lot of dogs' lives and horses' lives and whatnot. And so that was all fine and well, but, um, so, and part of this is me telling you the story is that so it's not that I don't put forth the effort I do. It's kind of like, you know, where are my efforts best utilized? And I can't do those things because I wore myself ragged with doing all this stuff, right? One person, even an underground movement of all of us. And we were all tired and yeah, we were making a big difference. But it really didn't change the idea that people thought that animals were just throwaway. It didn't really change the idea of it. And that was, I guess, the hardest part. So anyway, um, you know, affecting real change is a big deal. It's a big, it's a big thing. So this is how I think, just so you know, I'm, I'm kind of giving you an overview of how I see the world and how I think my efforts are best used and how I can be a good citizen of the planet and all those things with that said. So I had this other business a long time ago and I started out, although we had lots of history, we just didn't really have experience in the area, you know, and it seemed like a sort of a, a small town sort of deal. And so I, I was like, I didn't have a lot of money for marketing and I didn't really trust marketing because, you know, I'd been had many times about people who claim to do these big things, but then didn't really do much, but took my money, right? And then when I made a, you know, sort of complaint about it and I was the bad guy so I thought well how can I do this like what what is it that I do so what I did was I went through the phone book and I figured out all the people that could possibly use our services didn't know we're in the area and I wrote them a letter and on that letter I personalized it so it didn't seem like I didn't want it to be a mass mailing I'd worked for a mass mailing company once and it was a terrible place and um so I didn't and I know how I feel I just throw those things away anyway if I think somebody's not writing to me so I wanted it to be like I I was thoughtful and I named them and I com commented on their business practice like what they did and why they could use us and if they ever need us and even if they didn't need us right now maybe they could save the letter and at some time in the future, you know, and because we planned on being around for a long time and we were, we were around for quite a long time. And, um, uh, 
and maybe that they could call us in the future or give us a try or here's our references you can check us out and all this kind of stuff right and I for a year because you know when you first start a business you're not super busy and so I had to keep myself busy and granted I had other things I was studying writing and studying about taking classes and I was just you know doing a bunch of other stuff but in my office work I had this you know keep busy cause there's a lot of reasons why I need to be in the office anyway so I sent 25 letters minimum out a week for as long as it took me to get through that phone book and then I kind of forgot about it you know and some people called me almost right away and that was cool they didn't need me but they complimented me on the letter and the thoughtfulness and all that and I thought wow that's really weird that's that was not anything I expected and then um but you know so that business was around for about eight years no it was it was around for eight plus years because anyway um I was there for eight years, but it went on for about 15 years, I think. So, yeah, probably, I think about 15 or 16 years it was going around. It was still an active business, but anyway, so these people um, kept those letters, which I thought, they just really thought that it was a great letter. There you go. That's awesome. Anyway, they thought it was a great letter, and so they ended up calling us years later based on that one effort. That one effort, and I was like, wow, I never, in my in a million years, I never got that kind of bang for my efforts, you know, because this is how I think about it. It's like, you know, I call it sweat equity. You know, I've got more time than money in most situations. So, so that's what I do, you know. I put, and that's like, that's how I was raised, and I know that's how a lot of people are. You know, you got more time than money. Most people don't have near enough of either, but as the case may be. So with that said, I was thinking, I wonder if my efforts would be similarly utilized in the soap world. Now granted, I'm not expecting anybody to buy a bunch of soap. I don't even know exactly like, you know, but I guess that's just not like, just having a business plan isn't the end all be all. I started lots of endeavors that didn't have any business plan whatsoever and because I don't have much quit in me and I have lots of effort. So I don't know, take that for what it's worth. Anyway, I just think, you know, I'm, I'm starting to feel better about um, life in general and to also feel like um, we need some logical people in this world. And I feel like I'm one of them. So I'm going to tell you some things that I've been sitting on because the illogical people love to be mean. And see, that's the thing. Like, I don't know. That's how I tell the difference. They love to be mean and they love to be right. Like, I don't necessarily want to be right. I want to figure out a way forward, like a way to live in the world, right? But if I question somebody who's got an agenda or not very logical, they can't actually answer the question. That's the other sign too. They can't answer the question. They're evasive and sneaky and slippery. And I don't, I don't like that at all. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but anyway, I kind of think like, this is why I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I'm getting a bit braver. And I think that logical people need to have an ability to speak in this world and that's what I'm doing so that's what I'm saying I'm saying you know soap business is it's a hard thing just to sell soap straight out it's just hard and I know some people do really well with wholesale and a bunch of other stuff and But it's a hard thing, and so I was just coming up, trying to come up with new ways to connect with people, new meaningful ways to connect with people, because clearly you could just put something on the internet, right? But, you know, when somebody takes, takes the effort to do something, like, for example, I don't know, tell me what you think about this, like, so based on the story I told you about my previous business and the letters I wrote, and they were pretty thoughtful, and 
I would I was thinking maybe I could donate some like like these bars for example and I could wrap half a dozen of them up or so and send them to them and just say you know use them for yourself or share them with your friends or you know first of all who wouldn't want a soap bar with a a nice made bar of soap with a donkey face on it <laughs> And, um, and if they never come back, at least I supported a cause that I believe is a good thing, you know, because a lot of these places that are rescuing animals, donkeys and whatnot, they're really heartfelt and they do good work. And, and I know how much work it is to do what they're doing and, you know, and they, they operate on a skinny budget and, because they're just, you know, funded by themselves. And I don't know, even sometimes it's just nice to get a gift in the mail, you know? Somebody says they're thinking about you and they, they believe in what you're doing and sometimes you never know, that's the day that they could have thought to quit, you know, or to that their heart hurts them too much to keep going. I know that feeling. So anyway, wondered what you thought about all that and okay so let's do a cow here's a cow yeah look at that oh how is it that I just love these so much I just love them so much they just make me so happy so I, I think that's the other part is like you know we live in a world where things like we just make stuff people make stuff because they want to make money versus so much like and, and don't think that I'm a privileged person that can just like, psh, I'm not. I, I was ridiculously poor for a while. And all I did was just like scrape together a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And that's how soap dough sort of came about be out of necessity because I couldn't afford to get rid of anything, you know. And so, anyway. You know, I'm not that person that is, I've struggled too, you know, with everything. Mostly with the way things are, I've struggled. <laughs> uh, so I went to my local post office this morning and there's these particular types of things that I need in order to mail out orders. And they didn't have a lot on the shelf and the mail lady happened to be there. And so I asked her if she had some more in the back. I said I didn't want to take all the ones that she had out front. And and uh, she came out with a stack of them. Like, like, actually, I will use them. And I'm that person. If I don't use something, I'll bring it back, right? And I was, like, hesitant. And I was, like, because in the past, when I ran out of the same thing in the city, when I went up to them, they give me one. And I'm, like that's not going to help me. It'll help me like right this very second. But see the things that the free mail stuff that you, that you, I need in order to send out orders, what happens is you have to order those in advance. And most of the time they, they say like, first of all, if you order like a chunk of them, these padded mailers, it says you can order one to five of maybe 45 to 50. Like, they don't even give you accurate numbers, so you don't even know. So I order as many as they'll allow me, which is five, and, you know, five times 40 to 50. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm going to get 200 or I'm going to get, you know, 250 of them. I just don't know. So I order as many as they'll allow me to order. And then they say it's like two to three weeks or five to six weeks. What? What? What business operates like that? So, and then it, it, it depends on how busy they are. It depends on a lot of stuff if you're even going to get them. So you have to, like, I have to order them way in advance because I cannot ship without them. So anyway, so I go down and ask if they have any of those extras in the city and they give me one. So I'm like, yeah, that's not going to tide me over. I get one more order and I'm stumped, you know, I don't even know. So I went to this little, my little local post office and asked her and she gave me a whole stack and I was so impressed. I was like, I didn't even know what to say. I was like, wow, she, I thought it was a trick at first. 
and and she's just being really nice and essentially that's just logical because it saves her from running back and forth and you know giving me you know doling them out a little bit because she sees me come in there every day so well if she doesn't you know she knows i'm there i don't see her always but anyway so so there's that yeah so that's a whole nother story right Let's see, will this guy fit? This is a different size. Oh, yeah, that'll fit. Look at that. Here, let me show you how big that is. Two inches by three and a, almost three and a quarter. No, is that three and a quarter? Let's see, there's half. Yeah, almost three and a quarter. I do not know my measurements. That doesn't mean I'm stupid. I just don't think like that. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Yeah, and here's the other thing, too. I can tell you, like, the people at the post office in the city were just the nastiest. I mean, the nastiest people I'd ever met. There was one woman there who was super nice, and and I know that they're busy, and I know, no, I know all of that. Everybody has stresses in their life, and they're just downright mean. I'm like, why? Why do you got to be so mean? Why? And this other lady, she was really nice to me. So every time I went in there, I dropped it off. I make sure to say hi and thank you to her every single time. I said hi and thank you. And I very specifically said it to her. Not trying to exclude the other ones, but they were just so nasty to me. I was like, I can't even talk to you. I can't. You know, I'm not generally a mean or nasty person. I try really, really hard just to be polite. Um, nah. I am easy to be polite. I try really hard to be thoughtful, kind, or whatever, you know, because it's so easy to devolve into nastiness. Is that right? Can I just speak truth? I think it's easy to devolve into nastiness when other people are nasty. Hmm. I just started talking and didn't think. I don't know. I just know it's so much easier for me to be nice right now. I don't know. And, you know, there's another thing I can say this much. Like, some people just belong certain places. I think I just belong in the country, and that's been part of my anxiety. I don't, I never felt right in the city, ever. And that's nobody's fault. That's my own. So... Then, you know, I think things compound. I don't even know. I do not have this life figured out, just so you know. I don't, but I will share the little bit that I do have figured out, at least to some degree, and that might change. <laughs> That's why I was bringing this up, is like, what do you think about donating? Like, I don't want it to be cheesy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want them to think that I'm I'm being sly. I don't like that myself, and I don't... Because, yeah, I would love to be able to support them and work with them. Obviously, I can't work for free. But I also, you know, think, well, it's a good fit. And how would they ever see my work or any kind of work like this, you know? And, and I don't want to manipulate anybody ever, you know? To me, that's the worst thing you can do to somebody is usurp their personal power and choice. That's the worst thing you can do. I've had it done to me. And it took me my whole life to get past it, you know, is to make them think that their inner voice isn't correct. Not their social voice, their inner voice, you know, like how they think and what they, how they think inside themselves. You know, that to me is like the worst thing you can do is usurp somebody else's power. Oh, wouldn't know anything about that in the world right now. Let's see if this guy, I could see I pushed it under his nose a bit. Might have to clean this up. Ah, no, came out nice. Look at that. So tell me what you think about this. This has gone on long enough. Now you can see here's some of these. These just dry pretty quickly too. And that's the other thing about these stencils that's so awesome is that um, so these, because it's a thin layer, it'll dry, cure very quickly. Well, I don't know. That gets tricky when you start talking about curing. But let's put it this way. It will dry very quickly. It doesn't shrink. And then, you know, you can wrap your soap. So these are these bars are fully cured. So I'll leave these for like a week before I wrap them just so they don't make sure they don't smear or anything. 
But tell me what you think about sending those bars, these bars out to people that I think would be interested in them. I mean, again, even as just a gift, I mean, I don't even know how I'd phrase it. Just maybe I support you and I'm glad to see good works in the world. I, I'm not really sure how to think about that even. But I just thought, you know, it's like we have to think outside the box, you know. And those letters that I told you about, those did, those paid off for years and years and sometimes I would call people when, you know, or they'd call me and they'd let me know what they needed our services. They'd say, oh yeah, I got your letter years ago and I saved it. I was like, what? People don't save things like that. And they did. And so that was me being, that was me doing the best I could with what I had, which wasn't a lot of money, but a lot of sweat equity, a lot of time. And so, you know, I've had a lot of clever things come out of that process about not having that much money and having more time than money and being willing to put forth some effort so anyway maybe leave a comment and let me know and then if you like this style that i've been doing mostly like is trying to chat with you and and have some ideas about what we're doing as far as the soap making world and you know like the i want to show you this arm too at some point um like the photo boxes and how to take better photos with you know of your soaps and things like that and hear my opinions on that I mean granted you know what they say about opinions but I mean if you like this let me know in the comments and and I'll keep doing it and you know and if you don't comment I'll probably keep doing it anyway <laughs> all right have a great day thanks for watching